land in itself. Okay, h- how much would you value this property at? Uh, Nothing less than 10 million, I'm sure. Uh, 10 million what? Kwacha. No, man. More? 15? <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Well, this property is it's very expensive. It's very expensive. Well, how much are we talking about here? Uh, I need inspiration. If we can put everything together, yeah. mm. maybe uh, $30 million. That's way more than 10 million kwacha. Yeah. So, yeah. quick math. What, what, what's $3 million? That's about 54 million kwacha. Yeah. Approximately. 54 yeah. million kwacha. Yeah. There's a lot of things which has gone in here. A lot of things. A lot. See, corrupt people. Those people. Aka in the Chile, Mauka Moon, Uka Munun, Chef, Na corruption, Nida Nunkat, Que, Naman Balo Yariva corrupt. Bowman Lusambo's property has been seized by the Drug Enforcement Commission. Is Bowman Lusambo? going to be homeless anytime soon. So this is what we are going to be talking about today. Plus, we're also going to be touching the Nkwazi House debate because a lot of you have been wondering whether President Haka Indi Hichilema is going to migrate and go to Nkwazi House. Welcome to the show, my brother. How are you doing? I'm doing really great. Uh, and uh, it's uh, an interesting uh, day today seeing that uh, Mr. Lusambo's properties, mm. mind you, not just one, but a number of properties have mm. been uh, seized. So it, it brings about the issue of uh, corruption back into the public's uh, uh, you know opinion uh, whether the former minister slash uh, you know pf mim uh, currently he's still the uh, pf member has some cases to answer so this week uh, starting last week they were going through quite some interesting challenges their case was thrown away in the magistrate court uh, where they appealed that uh, their current case uh, or one of the current cases that they have should be uh, trialed at the high court uh, that was was thrown away by the magistrate quota so that's where doom started and then this week uh, we have seen uh, you know the activities by the ACC Quinchy we did uh, give out uh, a statement and a press a statement has been released uh, that uh, there are fresh new allegations and uh, cases uh, for Mr. Lusambo. All right. So now, you know, I really love uh, to, to dive deep into these particular topics because uh, I want to hear your opinion mm-hmm. as a disgrunt, uh, disgruntled, disgruntled youth. youth. Are you a disgruntled <laughs> youth? And what is your reaction as a disgruntled uh-huh. youth with regards to this particular, uh, you know, outcome? Every dog has its day. Right. You know, every dog has its day. And then this is a typical case of, uh, you know, like I said, every dog has its day. So whatever is hidden comes out. And power is something that is transferred from, you know, different people. So once you hold power, especially power of a country, a nation governing right. power, we right. really have to be, you know, very, um, uh, what's the right term? We really have to be very cautious of what we do, you know. So allegations of corruption are not new to the former uh, ruling uh, ruling party, which is the PF. Now, Mr. Lusambo, these are not new allegations. These are allegations that have been going through even when they were in, in power. power. So now, are we seeing justice served that they're no longer in <coughs> power? Now, are we going to see the fight against corruption actually take place? You know, so right. you know, th- those are my thoughts. Uh, I'm quite, you know, happy with that, uh, you know, we're able to see the ACC up in arms, you know, really doing that thing. We're able to see the DEC. Uh, I think uh, so far they started on a really messy trajectory. You know, people lost confidence in the ACC mm-hmm. and these other investigative wings. But mm-hmm. now what we're seeing is a different, aggressive ACC, different, aggressive uh, DEC. So apparently, uh, and uh, hopefully Mr. Uh, Honorable uh, Lusambo gets well. Uh, reports are that he is unwell. That's why he failed to show up, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, at the high, at the magistrate court oh, yeah, for I one did, of the I, cases as I well. I didn't even know that. So yeah. we are wishing Mr. Uh, or rather, yeah, Mr. Lusambo, a quick, a quick, quick recovery. recovery, you know. So, unfortunately, 
you know, is it a situation where we, you know, if we go back in time and remember when Honorable CK Chimbakambuli was being persecuted, uh, you know, before he rejoined the Patriotic Front Party, we saw that, uh, you know, he was going, he had a number of court cases uh, and, uh, you know, he started becoming ill, you know, obviously your health and it takes a toll on your health and everything. So yeah, hopefully, especially the mental, aspect, the mental as well. aspect as well. So hopefully Mr. Lusambo, if he is innocent, he will be able to clarify and get his property back. Uh, but as of uh, the, you know, the situation right now, things are seeming to be, you know, booky, as a disgruntled youth would say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for yeah. The, for so the, we didn't yeah. even give the, the viewers the details, you know. So basically, ACC uh, sees the property belonging to Bowman Lusambo worth 22 million kwacha. So this includes about eight different properties uh, located in Lusaka's Chamba Valley. How many properties does Mr. Lusambo have? I uh, I think uh, if you do remember of, on one of the popular podcasts, uh, he did mention that one of his properties where they were fuming was worth $3 million. That, $3 that's the amount of money that was dollars. spent. And, yeah, and this is the amount that, that came from his mouth. Bowman Lusambo on record did state that one of his properties, the properties where he was being recorded and interviewed, was worth three million US dollars. So, talking about uh, the different allegations, or rather the the accusations that he has been given and taken to court for, right? There's a lot of different things there. So here, the ACC is vaguely uh, referring to the funds that were used, uh, you know, to like. Uh, uh, build these properties or rather buy them, they are suspected to be proceeds of crime. Mm -hmm. So uh, funds suspected to be proceeds of crime is very wide and very diverse because there's a lot of different aspects that really come into that. And this is one of the reasons why I, I would, you know, I for one would really love to see the ACC specify Mm -hmm. So that we can know exactly where the suspected process of crime were coming from. So this also takes me back to Faith Musonda's case, because Faith Musonda's case was also vaguely uh, put as uh, you know funds to be suspected of crime. of crime. Like how? So we need to find out exactly what, what crime? crimes, what organizations were being used, who did what, who were the suspects, who were the accomplices. All these things need to be laid down. I am so sick and tired of hearing the process of crime uh, mm -hmm. type of narrative. Yeah, and, and the other question is, if we recollect and go back to the issue of uh, Feth Musonda, we did uh, see once the ACC stepped in, um, confiscated, you yeah. know, right now the ACC's um, uh, Queen Chiwe did mention that uh, right now they have just seized you know, yeah. and they have not yet been forfeited to the state, so they have right. just seized, seized the, 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 the properties, property. the different properties uh, uh, owned, uh, belonging to Mr. Lusambo that are suspected to have been built using proceeds of crime, you know. So going back to the case of Feth Musonda, are we going to see a situation where Mr. Lusambo forfeits these mm -hmm. properties? Yeah, so that really depends mm -hmm. on whether he's going to be able to prove, prove that the money that he used to build and buy these properties do was you actually think, genuine Do you properties. think Mr. Genuine resources. Do you think Mr. Lusambo has a business acumen that uh, can justify, you know, that Are you, are you, are are you are testing me? No, it's, it's just a question. It's just a question. You know? You're testing do me in front of people. So <laughs> does Mr. Lusambo have... Uh, what it takes to come up with a genuine business in a fair atmosphere ecosystem. Does he have the characteristic uh, characteristics to sort of uh, build a business from zero and really uh, turn it into a multi-billion quarter type of business? To be honest, I'm just going to be frank with you. I do not think so. We mm -hmm. all know, you know, we know how these people make money. We know. We know. It's very easy. It's easy as one, two, three. So mm -hmm. the reason why... Uh, a lot of these uh, prominent people who are mm -hmm. sort of uh, who were uh, close to the funds, who were close to power, mm -hmm. a lot of them usually get a lot of different uh, perks and they've, they've got an, an, an unfair mm -hmm. advantage, if I can put it that way. Mm -hmm. You know, we all saw the genesis of Bob and Lusambo. We all saw him putting on overalls. Yes. As a diehard. As a diehard. We mm. understand. I mean, if you just look at the, 
the IQ of uh, Mr. Lusama. I mean, just having a conversation and his interviews, you can tell, okay, this man, you know? So at this particular moment, uh, my opinion doesn't really matter, to be honest with you. It doesn't really matter what I think about Mr. Lusamba, whether he can genuinely build a build uh, a business from scratch and really turn it into something uh, great and something profitable. That doesn't really matter. What really matters is whether he's going to be able to prove that whatever properties he owns were genuinely mm -hmm. bought with authentic money. And when you talk about... Uh, sus uh, suspected proceeds of crime, right? This tagline. There's a lot of things involved there. There's uh, money laundering, there's tax evasion, and so on and so forth. You know, so I'm not really trying to say that uh, these are the different criminal uh, labels that were mm -hmm. attached to Mr. Lusama, because, you know, the ACC just vaguely said suspected proceeds of crime. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say is we yeah. all know how a lot of, uh, you know, prominent people uh, amass a lot of wealth, which really brings me to the fact, or rather to the point of us being called dis, uh, you know, disgruntled youths, youth, because a lot of youths out there are striving to make it, you yeah. know. And here comes a person who just like literally says, you know, you guys are just bitter for nothing. Of course, we are bitter because uh -huh. we do not really have the access uh, to certain perks and privileges that you have. Mm -hmm. You know, and there is a lot of hardworking, genuine Zambian business people out there who are, you know, breaking a lot of sweat just to make ends meet. But when it comes to people taking advantage of public resources, public coffers, that really is a huge problem. And I am for the for entrepreneurship and just basically uh, making our um, you know, society uh, sort of uh, have a business mentality. But yeah. we have to make the the the, the, the playing field, the playing field leveled. leveled. You don't need to have political affiliation, political connection. You don't need to know the owner and what not. Uh, I think this is... Um, the, the New Dawn's government fight against corruption should be a wake-up call to the now people in power and the next people that are coming. And this is a game-changer, leading to the fact that uh, now we should advocate for a level playing field. Just because you're a daughter or a son of Minister Chakuti or President A doesn't mean you're the only one that should have access to contracts, mining yeah. contracts, uh, 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 engineering contracts, and sure, other safe. contracts. You exactly. know? Exactly. And that's the environment uh, that we saw in the previous regime. Finti tuishi befi. We can't be, you know, uh, I know we're Christians and as Zambians, we like putting, <laughs> sweeping things under the rug and then acting as if the house is cleaner. This is a cleanup that needs to be done. Uh, we personally, I haven't judged Mr. Lusambo whether he's guilty or not. That's for uh, the ACC to and, do, yeah. uh, you know, to prove their case uh, and the courts, uh, the judiciary system. Uh, to uh, you know, give us an arrest or a jail <clears throat> sentence and and whatnot. Uh, so until that happens, uh, all we can do is speculate, but we can talk about what we have seen. So hopefully, Mr. Lusambo has, like I said, a business acumen that is going to say, well, this, this is three million dollars, and from. that's just from one property. Three million dollars is dollars. just for one property. Yeah, this yeah. is where this money came from. I've got business A, business B. So hopefully, and yeah. this reminds me of um, what's his name again? Uh, um, uh, no, 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 no. We were talking about him recently. He was appointed as uh, the gentleman that was talking about uh, lifestyle audits. Yes, that's what I was about to talk uh -huh. about. Um, uh, Moons, uh, Moons 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 yeah, mm. this is one of the reasons why lifestyle audits are very, very important, important, especially for public servants. You know, uh, if you are working with GRZ, right, you are a public servant and you are supposed to be scrutinized. Your money is of public interest you know so this is one of the reasons why musa mwenya who happened who was actually appointed to be the is it i, I forgot it but he got like <laughs> yeah. a very powerful position he is for the idea of lifestyle, lifestyle audits. audits you see when we are consistently auditing the lifestyle the expenditures and all that stuff the bank accounts these guys these guys are going to be behaving you know, so if lifestyle audits are done, I'm mm -hmm. sure there's going to be at least uh, a level of sanity with regards to people amassing wealth mm -hmm. out of, you know, 
uh, thin air. Because Out of just becoming an MP, becoming yeah, a minister, a, becoming a councillor, becoming a mayor, like becoming how, a district how are these commissioner. Getting yeah. all this money, you know, you just become uh, an MP, and you know they don't really get crazy amounts of money per year. They do not really gross that amount, mm-hmm. uh, that crazy amount of money. You know, a lot of these guys make less than, you know, 150,000 US dollars per annum, including all those perks that they are giving the sitting allowances and all that stuff. They don't really get crazy amounts of money. Mm-hmm. But how can a person who earns uh, less than 200,000 US dollars be able to have a $3 million property as one of the many houses that he has? Okay, let's say, for example, he was able to gross uh, $1 million per year which is very hard to do in Zambia, especially if you are running a business because only, you know, crazy sophisticated companies are able to sort of gross over a million dollars per annum, Mm -hmm. which is absolutely, you know, crazy and uh, very powerful. And and, and we see how these companies, uh, uh, for example, one of the biggest companies that, uh, yeah, that uh, boom, they do, yogurt they do sweets you know it's understandable because they have different products but does mr lusambo have a company that we can recognize as zambians and say he's making this, the this, money this company yeah. makes uh, Make, more than makes, one million dollars per, per, yeah, per which, year which which leads me to a thought that i had uh, will the pf the patriotic front uh, uh, party find uh, a leader with a money trail that can be traced and that cannot be linked to proceeds of crime because yes they're going for a convention and yes. this is that's a very good point so <laughs> right now we're talking about the patriotic firm because it's going to be hard to find a squeaky clean candidate you know it's going to be hard it's going to be a very yeah. tough thing to, to the do. acting president given lavinda uh, i think has an issue was implicated <laughs> in some things uh, and his daughter's name came up and blah 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 you're, and we have you're. heard um that he's not going to contest okay or, who else let's, let's let's play this game okay max Ochong. nah mm-hmm. It can't happen. Uh, Brian Mundule. The, the could people are championing for Brian Mundule, and we have seen, and this is where you know I was going with this. Before this, we we've seen how people like Shufetali, and now how they are trying to throw to us Brian Mundule that he has you know a squeaky clean record, and he's got companies. At some point, there was a headline where Brian Mundubile hires white people, you know, in his in his, in his company. He has had but, but white people, me, you know. So to, make, to me, that's not that's not really yeah, something but that you can. I think flow it's, it's something that they were trying to. I want to see the portray. books. I want to see mm-hmm. the books. I want to see the books. You know. Mm-hmm. So if uh, Brian Mundubile has got uh, a business or a company that is able to gross let's say upwards of 10 million us dollars per year Mm -hmm. you know that really means in a month they are able to have uh, a monthly turnover of around uh, 1 million roughly Mm -hmm. right i want to find out what type of business is that Mm -hmm. what are you selling and uh, how is that even possible you know i'm not really saying i'm not really saying we are we are incapable of having businesses that gross uh, over 1 million dollars 1 million us dollars per month but that really takes a whole lot <laughs> it takes a whole lot from any angle that you look uh, at i do understand a lot of uh, you know common businesses in zambia they are able to gross over 10,000 us dollars and above between 10,000 us dollars and uh 50,000 us dollars these are like really solid genuine businesses if you know what i'm talking about so this is one of the reasons why look me i'm a numbers guy i'm economics all that stuff, I, I really understand it. So, if somebody has got one property that is worth three million US dollars, right? That really means that net worth should be at least ten times more than that. Thirty million US dollars upwards, between thirty million US dollars to about a hundred million or one hundred and fifty uh, million US dollars. But if you look at the inception of Bowman Lusambo's career, how did he get into the game, and when did he do all these businesses? Where are the profiles of all these businesses in order for him to have like such he, a he was powerful? Up his uh, allowances. He, he was saving up his allowances. He had you. You <laughs> cannot do that. Even if you attend every danger, given sitting allowances and all these traveling uh-huh. allowances, I guarantee you as a zambian public servant mp or minister you cannot uh, amass more than five hundred thousand us dollars per year mm-hmm. so, anybody can argue with yeah, me so so it's quite interesting that you know uh, more properties 
are yet to be seized according to we're well, looking at the statement uh, by ACC the fact that they have put in uh, uh, the statement that uh, there are other properties uh, that have sus- that they're suspecting have been put in other people's names you know uh-huh. uh, so there's there's all that going on uh, and honestly how much we were looking at people are crying for uh, a report on um, declaring assets the, the president declaring has assets do we know how much mr lusambo is worth i'm sure he hasn't publicly declared his uh, you know yeah but uh, but as worth. a former as a former minister shouldn't that be in the public domain it shouldn't should be we in the public know domain. shouldn't we when we, we should, should know yeah and when somebody declares interest to be a public servant you cease to have that privacy so this is one of the reasons why a lot of you guys are going to be saying ah look mona you are pocket watching you know we're not really pocket watch- watching these are public servants they yeah, are not liable. going to uh, uh citizens private citizens and then asking for uh let's say for example if dangote was staying in zambia yeah. wouldn't have just been saying dangote should tell us how much is worth he's not active in politics in, he's not a politician not he's a not a public, public servant as just in general so so w- councillor you know about dc bashani as long as you're a, you know a public servant you have we have to know how much you are worth we have to know how many business you have we have to know you know basically we have to have an idea of your income flow you know because it's very important we're going to trust you with a lot of money you know we're going to trust you with our money that we're paying taxpayer uh, taxpayer money we're going to trust you with money that's coming in from well wishers that are you know uh, donating money to uh, various different causes such as for example we saw the covid issue a lot of donations came through there were a lot of scandals with how those donations donated were handled medicines. <laughs> you know we had donated bicycles that we didn't know where they if they you know how they uh, they were used and all that stuff so it's very important and uh, and like we said uh, we will later uh, you know the investigative wings uh, do their job uh, and uh, let us know whether the gentleman uh, is uh, guilty or, or not. not yeah and everybody is innocent until proven, proven guilty. guilty you see we are not here to sort of uh, crucify honorable boman lusambo no we're just speculating and we've got this information that recently came out and we're just giving you our two ways because this is what we do and by the way uh you know we have to let the professionals do what they have to do because i am not a professional journalist mm-hmm. or lawyer so you know i'm just here to speculate and just have fun with you so if you have been watching this video up to this particular you know uh, uh, point kindly share this video on your facebook timeline and in five different facebook groups that you belong to hit the like button uh comment give us all your you know your your well articulated thoughts and uh, help us grow the page mm. anyhow moving on from bomb and moving Lusab. on from bomb and Lusab. but though, one last one last one before you know i'm a zebra <laughs> apparently <laughs> i'm a zebra you know the, the 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 house one of the properties that has been seized uh, uh, in uh, chamba valley is a beautiful mansion that mr lusambo built for himself and his family where he had different various animals such as zebras uh, you know uh, impalas uh, yeah. you know it, it, it was it was exotic Ma- exotic it was it, it was a, exquisite it was an in your face display of wealth, wealth. you yeah. know so zebra apa na mane bazi what does a zebra eat besides grass as in uh, i don't even know what what does you know I, I, it's it's crazy uh, so and the other thing that as well that we should mention is that people that were renting uh, uh, in some of the properties that Mr Lusambo yeah. uh, you know the properties that have been yeah. seized uh, have been uh, told to vacate the you know oh, the, man. The, 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 so the, you know if it's houses of, uh, affected even other people kind of connected to him, him. are being affected anyway uh, <laughs> like let's move on quasi <laughs> now ladies and gentlemen this is going to be like a little bit controversial but this is what we do on z conan quasi house president hichlema hasn't moved from his uh, house and a lot mm-hmm. of people have been saying look Zambia is wasting a lot of resources, a lot of manpower to secure the security of uh, President Hichilema. Should he move to Nkwazi and if not why? Why mm-hmm. hasn't he moved to Nkwazi house because apparently every person, every past president, president of Zambia has resided in Nkwazi. So what is special about President Hichilema? So we saw 
uh, Anthony, Anthony Wada, Wada, who happens to be the presidential spokesperson, he did come to the aid of uh, President Hichilema saying, boys. Yeah, so that's a thing. So the thing is, here's, what is wrong yeah, with Nkwazi here's House? Here's the thing, here's the thing. Honestly, 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 guys. I, I was one person, in the morning when I watched that, you know, I was one person uh, who was... Like, okay, guys, we just need to humble ourselves. Whether I don't think that place would be that bad, uh, the fact that the former president was living in Quasi House. Okay. I was that guy. I was that guy. But ah. there's a but. There's a ah. but going on. Um, I found something uh, from um, the 2019 on the Diamond uh, TV news app. Uh, uh, media page. Diamond TV is a big, uh, uh, you know, TV station in Zambia. One of the reputable TV stations in Zambia. So hope. So I don't think that is fake. So this is an article that was, uh, you know, um, posted on that uh, page. Obviously, they did their investigation by the journalists there. Where uh, news? It rather the headline is New State House construction starts this year. Government says it will go ahead with the construction of a new state house because uh, the current one has become a danger to President Edgar Lungu. So now this was a statement issued out by, uh, let's see if I can find the person, uh, Minister of Infrastructure Development, Ronald Stotela, uh, who disclosed that, that the place was a danger to Mr. Edgar Lungu. So having this information, I'm thinking... Well, okay, they should just maybe, yeah, it, it's valid, you know, it's it's valid. So right. that, oh. that's, you know, for me, I, I feel like the next thing that they have to do just to prove their case is just go with cameras and show <laughs> us cameras, and show, show us, us how, you know, how uh, you bad. Know, deplete, uh, de depleted the, 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 you know, the, the house is. We we'll understand. Yeah, I understand. Because now <laughs> it's, Zambia is a Christian nation. It's a Christian nation, <laughs> you know, because now it's a whole political game of Chochi. So, you know, the former ruling party saying, yes, man, if this guy, if President Edgar Lungu could stay there, why is this guy failing to humble himself and stay there? Okay, but but then we have other statements as well saying yeah. that uh, it was a danger to President Edgar Lungu. Exactly. You know? Now, okay, you know, I'm a numbers guy. Hmm. Everybody knows that, huh? I'm a numbers guy. How much money is uh, Zambia spending on, uh, you know, these daily trips with uh, President ha Haka in the Hitchland? The motorcade, the, the, uh, the security, maybe trying to put it. Hey, how much money are we spending on that? I think that information is in the filer's office. <laughs> <laughs> so we need it's, to find it, the it's, filer. It's, it's really a lot. It's really a lot. Yeah. And, uh, you know, one of the, uh, you know, points that we were given by the IMF is uh, in order for Zambia to, like, reduce its expenditure with regards to, you know, our fiscal and monetary policies, ETC. So obviously this particular, these daily trips, mm -hmm. you know, from uh, the president's house to, you know, work back and forth, there is a lot of, uh, you know, uh, investments, money going into these particular things. However, I do understand, you see, okay, let me just be a little bit controversial, you know, because there's been speculations. This is not me saying as Mnalola in my capacity. I'm just saying what the, you know, the, the people have been saying. They're saying, I'd say, come on, kwazi oku, kwaba, kwaba mango oku. 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 Kwaba mango People are like, uh, uh, th this is too much. This is uh, spiritual. This is supernatural. There's supernatural things going on. By the way, these are unconfirmed rumors. We're just speculating. We're here. just, you know, <laughs> being Zambians. But um, I, I, I also have thought about that, seeing that this is just my observation and my, my observation and opinion uh, that our president is traditional. Our president is, uh, you know, I wouldn't pass it by him you know where he doesn't trust the you know mm. the place because of these <laughs> supernatural. <traditional> supernatural situations <laughs> but you know obviously it, 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 to it, survive. It, it, but anyway to survive, look you know? <clears throat> okay i understand i understand i had a very profound conversation with one of the most intelligent people that i have ever seen mm. and he said look if there are supernatural things going on at Inquazi House, let's handle it supernatural. Let's get a national <laughs> witch doctor, Sangoma, or whoever has got the powers to remove whatever we have is in Inquazi House. declared ourselves as a Christian nation. So us 
doing that is simply going against the no, declaration of being a Christian You know, nation. it can be, you know, just a private, well, okay, they're the best Sangoma in Zambia. <laughs> Go and cleanse this particular area and make it safe for the president to live. I mean, I'm sure there can be a lot of volunteers saying, mm-hmm. we, we do, we go and sort it out. Mm-hmm. So if it's a supernatural <laughs> phenomenon <laughs> or if it's a supernatural matter, let's deal with it supernaturally mm-hmm. as well. So we can hire Inganga from Zambia or these people who can mm-hmm. cleanse things. Let's get it done and let's get it over with. Yeah, but, uh, you know, uh, closing up, I do, I do believe... Uh, the Nkwazi is in a deplorable state, but not in the in the manner that we're thinking of as uh, you know uh, ordinary yeah. folk, ordinary Zambians. You know, not in that. Yeah, manner. the supernatural thing, ladies and gentlemen, that was just spicing up the conversation. <laughs> the conversation yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, but but the the explanation that has been given to us by Bo Anthony Walia, I think is doing a disservice to the president because uh, when we add up his daily expenses uh, in terms of fuel, in terms of manpower, in terms of everything, you know, the inconveniencing the Zambian people, you know, with his uh, day-to-day trips and all that stuff, um, I think we are losing out more than uh, the money that we would spend renovating it. Uh, and if it's an issue of saving money uh mm-hmm. we can we can find we can find a way where yeah. you know you know we can find a uh, well I, I don't know but a cheaper way i don't know why we want to be so lavish with our public servants you know yes the president uh you know needs a good posh place but i think we can find something that can be in the middle renovate, blah, 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 do the maintenance. Uh, we, we don't need uh, uh, something very fancy. And then we cut down on the expenses of these yeah. daily trips because I, I, don't think, I don't think we're going to manage five years of back and forth Eesh. trips. Eesh. Even just the way the traffic is disrupted, I'm sure a lot of Lusaka residents have uh, witnessed what usually happens, like everything gets shut down. So this is one of the reasons mm-hmm. why we have to expeditiously sort of uh, come up with a solution and just, you know... Do something that that works. Yeah. So back again, communication. I uh, the video. I don't know if you watched it of one, one, uh, Anthony Walia saying, right. "Hey, I can't stay there as well." Yes, you know, you're trying to convey the message as yes. it is, but the way you're the conveying it got distorted. distorted. This is something that has been prevalent in the new Don government. You know, they are trying to like, sir, uh, you know, say certain things, right? They're trying to relay or rather put out, uh, put across a, a specific message Mm -hmm. but sort of or rather somehow the Mm -hmm. message gets distorted or it just comes out sounding different like contrary to what they were trying to sort of uh, you know relay Mm -hmm. so this is one of the reasons why we're saying look there has to be efficiency and that this problem has to be solved because Mm -hmm. instead of us getting the idea of Nkwazi House being in a deplorable state a state which is you know unbearable or something that is uh, unhealthy or something like that right we just ended up having memes and conversations saying okay Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Mr. Anthony Wale, uh, 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 let's see what type of house you live in in order for you to refuse in Kwasi House. Let's see what type of house you were living in three years ago or even five years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's that's what we got as Zambians. So this is one of the reasons why. Look, communication, communication, communication is ultra important, especially for people who are representing, you know, the government of the Republic of Zambia, because this the. It's going to get worse than this. Yeah, so we need to improve in our communication. Just simply say, tell the people, guys, okay, the, we, need, we need a few renovations made, but we're looking at a better way, a cost-effective way to make this so that, uh, you know, y- y- people love to be caressed, you know. We actually understand, uh, you know, Zambia the inconvenience uh, that uh, <laughs> these trips are making. So we're trying to find uh, a solution uh, that uh, will be uh, best uh, for the president as well as for the Zambian people. Yeah. Move on. We want we no, even that, you, know. you you just need to show the people. Yeah, just, I mean, that's it's all. all about camera works here. You know, we deal with a lot of uh, you know, uh camera, video footage and all that stuff. You can just find like some empty spaces or some really really bad uh, areas of Nkwazi house and say, "Na mwana, if you soaked fi up on if if nani, if if my poor, if my planga and all that stuff. Just show the people what you really mean because it's going to be hard for us to sort of uh understand and realize that okay look in quasi house where is in where is in quasi house located state house are you telling me for a fact that in quasi house could really be that bad I come mean, on 
and and it's, it's it's just straight out mockery and, and you understand this in the sense that when you look at the rural areas uh, you know even the townships even some of the 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 you know places here in Lusaka uh, and when you see how the citizens are living those people that are living there are living and they're able to live and then yeah somebody you come and say in quasi house is quasi, the, quasi house at state house on, man how how when uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> even if you just go to these ghettos yeah. if you if you go to the places where people go to the toilet the pet latrines we have seen on several occasions people dying well, when trying to relieve themselves, a pit, la, pit latrine literally collapses and then just consumes, consumes them. them. So this is one of the reasons why you know people uh, people are thinking, okay, peop, you guys are becoming too bougie. Yeah, for becoming too too bougie and all that stuff. So this is one of the reasons why. Look, show us. Uh, make sure that we understand. Make sure that we are able to see with our very own eyes. You know, get get Tito Tito Kalama yeah. to go and do a report on, do on a how report. bad. <laughs> you know, he, you know, he did do a good report on the crane that uh, you know uh, was uh, causing danger and whatnot. So he can be a great narrator and tell us. Uh, you know, these are. <laughs> I'll let you finish using Tito Malama's voice. Yeah, we love Tito. Yeah, we love Tito. By the way, big shout out to Tito Malama. Yeah, doing very to well. Uh, Spring TV. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that's generally it with the issue of the president uh, commuting to and uh, from a state house uh, on a daily basis. Uh, we need uh, uh, proper communication. Communication that won't make us feel like. Hmm, Boss, you know, if, 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 now you're too good for, you know? Yeah, you're too, you're good, too for good for Quasi, for quasi <laughs> you know? <laughs> and by the way, these are not jabs thrown at Anthony Voile. No. We love Anthony Voile. He is a friend of the show. Anthony Voile, Mubita Nawa. You know, these are our people. We're just saying, look, the communication, sometimes it just gets distorted. That's all we are saying. Yeah. So uh, we're wrapping up. Your final thoughts? Oh, my, my final thoughts. Mm. I think we should just get the National <laughs> Witch Doctor. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. So final thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, ACC, great job. At least you are proving to us that you are definitely here to fight corruption. And there DPP, is we need a conviction. Yes, we need a conviction from uh, DPP. And by the way, there are sort of unconfirmed rumors saying Lillian Siuni has retired. I think those are just rumors. We don't really have like any uh, official report with regards to are allegedly resigning. So, ACC, great job. We really hope to see more, uh, you know, seizing of property and just forfeiting it to the state and mm -hmm. just, you know, just redistributing those resources to the people of Zambia. And as far as Nkwazi House is concerned, we need to find a solution that really helps Zambia to save money. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think uh, with the uh, topics... A lot has been said. Uh, so my final uh, uh, remarks are not exactly on what we talked about since we talked about the DPP. Uh, my, I think, message would go to the UPND members that are calling on the resignation of the DPP. I think the nation is now attentive to what's happening uh, in the governance uh, uh, hemisphere. So uh, right now, you know, now is a tug of war between uh, the opposition simply saying that, uh, and last did give out a statement uh, condemning uh, the actions by some of the UPND members who are harassing the DPP. Let let just whatever system needs to be done is done. Uh, Pilato, uh, Mr. Chama did uh, report a case, a complaint, did raise a complaint. Uh, so let's see how that goes uh, and how things unravel. If we take this issue in a political way, the message again will be distorted uh, and justice won't be served. So those were my last comments on the issue. Yep, so ladies and gentlemen, remember, share this video on your Facebook timeline and in five different Facebook groups that you really belong to. Let the people know about Muna and Siku because we are here uh, and we're just going to be giving the people what they need. So remember, help the Z Corner TV community TV station uh, to sort of grow. The, the only way we can do this is by you supporting us, you know, support us by just simply spreading the word tag about five different uh you know friends that you have so that they can watch this video and then just let us or rather help us grow so together we can that's all we have for you ladies and gentlemen from me and siku and the z corner studios we are going to see you tomorrow so have a great evening and enjoy <laughs>